In this video, I'm going to show you how to stop blisters from forming and give you a great method to take care of a blister if you do get one out on the trail. What's up guys, Pi here and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I talk about ultralight backpacking, through hiking and all things gear related. Um, in the past few years, I've hiked well over 5,000 miles and I can count the amount of times I've had a blister on two hands. Um, if you want to learn how to take care of your feet on trail, the most important thing is to learn to stop blisters from forming in the first place. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in this video. The first step in stopping blisters from forming is choosing good shoes and good socks. Finding the right hiking shoe for your feet is extremely important to prevent blisters. I have an old video on my channel about the Ultra Low Peak series of shoes, which are still my go-to hiking shoe. But essentially what you're looking for in a good hiking shoe is that it fits snugly but not too tight obviously to prevent blisters. Um, it has breathable mesh on the outside of the shoe to allow moisture to escape. Blisters essentially form when there's friction, heat and moisture and having that breathable mesh allows uh, perspiration and any moisture inside the shoe to escape as much as possible and then of course you're looking for a hiking shoe that has good grippy outsole for mixed terrain. Also, choosing good hiking socks is one of the best things you can do to stop blisters from forming. Um, a few weeks ago, I released a whole video on who makes the best hiking socks. I strongly encourage you to go check out that video, but basically what you're looking for in the best hiking socks is a wool or synthetic blend hiking sock that's mid-weight, not too thick, not too thin, but fits your feet well. So it's super important that I mention the shoes and socks now because you can follow the method that I'm gonna give you to stop preventing blisters, but unless you have the right shoes and socks out on the trail, you're kind of asking for trouble. So you found shoes and socks that work for your feet. Now is the most important tip to learning how to prevent blisters on trail. It's to apply a thin layer of Vaseline to your feet every morning before you start hiking. It really is that simple. I've tried a bunch of different products over the years that are designed to prevent chafing and blisters and I keep on coming back to Vaseline. Vaseline is really cheap and it's easy to find in most trail towns along the way on a through hike or a backpacking trip. What I'll normally do is buy a small container of Vaseline from the travel section at the local supermarket or if I get a big pot of Vaseline, I can always repackage it into a small container like this. This is really great because it can go in the hip belt pocket of my backpack, so I have easy access to it throughout the day. I also use this Vaseline for chafing. If I'm hiking and I'm getting some chafing between my legs, or my backpack straps are rubbing on my shoulders or on my lower back, I use Vaseline, the same Vaseline that I use on my feet to prevent chafing from the backpack. So what I do when I'm packing up in the morning, um, I come out of my sleeping bag, I take my socks, I wipe off any dirt and grime from my feet, I take the Vaseline and I work just a small amount into my feet. I kind of give myself a small foot massage to kind of wake up all the small muscles in my feet and uh, try and relieve any pain that I've got from the previous day's hiking. Um, I work the Vaseline into both of my feet, all between my toes, especially on my heel, the tops of my feet, everywhere. Um, I shake off my socks pull my socks on, lace up my hiking shoes, and then I'm pretty much good to go. It's such a quick and easy step. It takes just a few seconds in the morning, and I found it to be the most effective way of preventing blisters out on the trail. So that's what I specifically do to my feet to prevent blisters from forming, but that's only really one part of the puzzle. One of the most important things to do to prevent blisters from forming is to avoid uh, getting your feet wet when crossing rivers and streams on a hike. Um, on most through hikes or backpacking trips in general, you're going to be crossing streams and rivers at some point. Um, and getting your feet, specifically your shoes and your socks wet, is not the most ideal environment to prevent blisters. Um, when I get to a river crossing, I take a look around me, I assess the stream or the river um, and decide whether I can safely remove my shoes and socks. Um, I only remove my shoes and socks to cross a river if I can see that the riverbed is uh, made up of smooth stones that aren't ideally covered in algae. Um, of course, I'm not going to risk cutting my feet on sharp rocks or slipping on rocks where there's algae um, just to prevent my feet from getting wet. If I know that there's going to be a series of river crossings one after the other, which is quite common, I'll just leave my shoes and socks on because I don't want to be constantly taking my shoes and socks off on a hike like that. But if I know I've got one big fold and I'm not going to have another one for the rest of the day and it's safe to cross in bare feet, then I'll, I'll usually do that. Of course, the reasons that I don't want my shoes 
shoes and socks to get wet is because moisture is one of the biggest causes of blisters. We talked about it being uh, friction, heat and moisture and if you get wet hiking shoes and socks and you're hiking in those for the entire day you're obviously kind of creating an environment for blisters to, to form. So for example now I assume I've removed my shoes and socks I've crossed the river safely, got to the other side. This is a great opportunity for me to like check my feet again because I've probably already been hiking for some time now. Um, so I'll check my feet, I'll wipe off any dirt and any grime, check for any hot spots, um, put my shoes and socks back on and continue hiking. Another important step to stop blisters from forming is to allow your feet, shoes and socks to dry whenever possible. Of course, if we've crossed a river in our shoes and socks, they're gonna be soaking wet. Obviously, in ideal conditions where it's nice and sunny and warm outside, I'll put my shoes and socks in direct sunlight so they have the best possible chance of drying and it allows my feet to breathe better. Um, getting rid of as much moisture as possible is just really gonna help preventing blisters. It's also a case that you maybe haven't crossed any body of water, but your feet might be wet just from perspiration, especially on a humid trail like the Appalachian Trail, you're gonna be sweating a lot. Of course, your feet will just sweat inside your shoes. You just wanna give them the best possible opportunity to breathe and remove all the moisture throughout the day. Another important thing to prevent blisters from forming in the first place is to try and uh, keep clean feet, clean shoes and clean socks. Of course, on a backpacking trip or a through hike, it's pretty hard to do that. But if you are crossing a river, that's a good opportunity to wipe off your feet and try and get the sweat and grime off. I don't recommend that you use soap of any kind in the backcountry. It's not usually necessary and of course it can be harmful for the environment. Um, on a through hike, you're gonna be in towns every say three, four or five days and you should definitely use that opportunity to do laundry and wash all the socks that you have with you. Um, I take three pairs of socks usually on a through hike or a backpacking trip. I have two dedicated pairs for hiking in and then a third pair that I try and hold aside for sleeping in. The pair that I hold back for sleeping in is still a perfectly good hiking sock. I don't carry a big thick wool sock for sleeping in. In very wet, humid situations, if both of my hiking socks are wet, then sometimes I'll hike in my sleeping socks. Um, especially if I know I'm gonna be in town soon and I can do laundry and dry out all my socks. So you're on the trail, you're hiking, you've followed all the steps that I've just given you and you feel some discomfort. You sit down, you take off your shoes and socks and you've either got a fully formed blister or you can feel that a blister's coming on, you've got like some sort of hotspot. Now I'm gonna show you how to tape your feet with Luco tape to stop that blister from getting worse or to deal with the blister so that you can continue hiking throughout the day. Let's take a look at that method. Okay, so you've followed all of the previous steps, but for one reason or another, you can feel a blister coming on or it's already too late and you already have a blister. There's two methods that you wanna use Luco tape for. If the blister is not fully formed yet, what you wanna do is you wanna take a length of Luco tape and apply it to the area where you've got the hotspot. You rip off a piece of tape, a little bit bigger than the area that's being affected and you carefully press the Luco tape down, avoiding any wrinkles and any bubbles. Um, let it sit for a little while just to allow the adhesive to really take a good hold. Then you can take your shoes and socks and put them back on again. Just simply by putting the Luco tape over the affected area should cut down on the amount of friction and rubbing from your shoes and enable you to continue on hiking. But what do you do if you take off your shoes and socks and you have a clearly formed blister? Either one that's already burst or that's a big bubble and looks kind of nasty. There's a slightly different approach you have to take with Luco tape. For this method, you're gonna use two separate pieces of tape. The first piece of tape, it needs to be a little bit bigger than the blister itself. Um, rip that off and then rip off a second piece of tape that's a little bit larger. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take that smaller piece of tape and you stick the sticky side of that piece to the sticky side of the larger piece of tape. So then what you've effectively created is a large piece of sticky tape with a piece of tape on the inside of that with the non-sticky side facing outwards. You then apply the non-sticky side to the blister and use the larger piece of tape to push down and then keep it in place and keep it secure. Basically what that's doing is that's covering the blister without putting the adhesive directly onto the blister and it prevents any more friction and rubbing directly onto the sensitive area. Luco tape will stay on for hours and days at a time. Um, you can leave it on, as far as I'm concerned, for three or four days or at least until you get into town where you can remove the tape, clean your feet properly, of course using hot water and soap. 
Um, if you are carrying a small thing of antibiotic ointment, such as Neosporin, um, and the blister has burst, then of course applying a little bit of antiseptic ointment will you know, help keep that clean and stop any sort of infections from growing. Of course, I wouldn't normally carry such a large roll of Luco tape. I'll normally wrap it around an old hotel keycard or even sometimes around my trekking poles, but I always wanna have it close at hand, so if I do need to stop sort of halfway through the day um, and take care of a blister, it's close at hand. Okay, so go out and try those methods. Let me know in the comments how that works out for you. If you've got any other tips tips or tricks to prevent blisters on trail then leave it in the comments um, for some more videos on ultralight backpacking and through hiking you can click right here and don't forget to subscribe to the channel thanks for watching catch you in the next one